Hello everyone and welcome to another beginner's tutorial, this one on the mobile network cost of ownership or TCO. We are going to start with the very basics but then dive into the details. Let's start with a simple example that's easy to understand. Let's say you decide that you need a PC or desktop computer. So you purchase the desktop computer. Most of the time the screen is not included so you have to buy a screen separately. For this desktop computer, you need to purchase a desk and a chair. You will also have to purchase cables, mouse, printer, etc. There will also be some one-off software costs. For example, we have standalone Acrobat and some video editing software that we purchased outright. So all of the above are one-off costs, but we also have many ongoing costs. Electricity costs, internet connection costs, regardless of whatever type of internet connection you have. If you use cloud storage like OneDrive or Dropbox as backup storage, there are ongoing costs associated with that. Then there are ongoing software costs that you may have on subscription. For example, we have Office 365 subscription, so we pay monthly fees for Microsoft Office, Outlook, etc. Then finally, things can always go wrong, so we would have occasional hardware or software repair costs. These one-off costs are referred to as capital expenditure or CAPEX. The ongoing costs are referred to as operational expenditure or operational expense or OPEX. TCO is the sum of capital expenditure, CAPEX, and operational expense, OPEX. Most people do not have a complete visibility of CAPEX and OPEX. As this picture of an iceberg shows, CAPEX is generally visible, but just a small part of the total TCO. One more thing, you will find that everyone writes CAPEX and OPEX in different ways. They are all correct, but better to use just one style for consistency. In this presentation, we will use the style that is shown in bold on the second row. Here is the generic mobile network architecture that you have seen in our tutorials previously. Without going too much into technical details, we can say that at a high level, the network components include radio access network or RAN, transport, which includes all halls like back hall, front hall, etc. We then have the core network, operations and support, and everything else can be put into the miscellaneous bucket. For the remainder of this presentation, we are going to use many assumptions and the rule of thumb. This is mainly because the numbers we will use are very generic and do not apply to different parts of the world. We will be sharing the PDF of this presentation on the 3G4G website, as well as on our SlideShare channel. At the end of that PDF, you will be able to see some examples of TCO, and we will provide the source whenever available. At a very high level, in a typical mobile network, the CAPEX is 30% of the total cost, while OPEX is 70% of the TCO. This can vary widely, depending on what arrangements the operator has. We will look at some details when we discuss RAN. Note that this average is for a 10-year period. The reason for saying this is because initially the CAPEX is much higher due to spectrum costs and other upfront costs. Over a period of time, these costs are much lower, so we generally average them over a 10-year period. Also, historically, Spectrum used to be assigned for a 10-year period. The operators had to pay this amount up front. The regulators would typically allow the operators to continue using the Spectrum after the 10-year period, but then they would have to pay an annual license fee, which would be based on the market value at that time. If we look at the network CAPEX part, we can see that the RAN is typically 50% of the total CAPEX. One of the reasons for this being high is due to spectrum costs, but spectrum can also be part of OPEX as we just discussed. We will look at it in a bit more detail further on. The transport network is 15%, core network is 10%, operations and support is 20%, and other miscellaneous costs are 5%. When we look at the network OPEX part, RAN is again one of the largest costs of OPEX. Power consumption is a very big part of RAN OPEX, which increases significantly with 5G. 
so Iran is 65% of the OPEX, followed by operations and support with 15%, transport with 10%, and Corey Network miscellaneous stuff with 5%. If we look at the RAN CAPEX breakdown, we see that Spectrum contributes 10% of the total CAPEX in the network. RAN equipment is 10%, antennas are 2.5%, other accessories are 5%, site construction is 15%, and installation is 7.5%. As you can see, site construction, Spectrum, and equipment accounts for the majority of the RAN costs. If we now look at the RAN OPEX breakdown, we see that the power consumption accounts for 9.75% of the total network OPEX. Site rental and RAN operations both account for the highest individual OPEX contribution within the network. The manpower is 6.5% of the network OPEX. And finally, other hardware and software linked to RAN accounts for 9.75% of the total network OPEX. Now let's understand the RAN CAPEX and see how operators can optimize and reduce it. Instead of building the mobile network sites themselves, many operators are now preferring to partner with other operators for site sharing or leasing the sites or space on tower from tower companies. In case of site sharing, the cost can be cut in half. In case of leasing, the CAPEX gets converted to OPEX. We have made a beginner's tutorial on mobile network sharing options. Check it out if you are not aware of the different options. As you can see, site sharing means only sharing of the space on the tower or physical site. All the operators will still have to deploy their own equipment, backhaul, power, etc. A site sharing example from Hawaii. This is an example of multi-operators with multiple generations and multiple frequency bands in use. If you follow the news carefully, you will notice that there are all these different network sharing deals happening as operators try to cut down on CAPEX. In other cases, some MNOs are forming their own tower companies from which they can lease the sites. This allows them to convert their CAPEX to OPEX while keeping control of their own towers. In other cases, the tower companies are buying the towers from operators and leasing them back. This way, the operators do not have to worry about the towers and sites in any way, and it all becomes OPEX. Surprisingly, the cables and connectors add not only a lot of extra cost to the equipment, they also add RF losses and weight on the towers. There are many different innovations that are happening to cut down these RF cables and connectors, making the final load on the site lighter. Another set of innovations are happening in antennas. Instead of deploying multiple passive antennas, operators can get multi-rat and multi-band antennas that can replace multiple of these older ones with a new one. These keep the site tidy and simple and reduces the operator footprint on the site. In many cases of site leasing, the operators are charged by the size and weight, so these innovations help. Equipment is roughly 20% of the CAPEX, but with 5G, it has increased significantly in most cases. One of the reasons why virtualized RAN, centralized RAN, and open RAN is so much in the news is because all of these are promising to bring the CAPEX of a network down. We have a popular OPERAN explainer video, check out if you haven't already done so. Another innovation that we need to bear in mind is Massive MIMO. While Massive MIMO increases the network capex, it also improves spectral efficiency by increasing the network capacity. This brings us to installation. This has traditionally included not just installing the equipment on the tower, but also planning the RF coverage, etc. With 5G, there is now a lot more equipment that needs to be installed and massive MIMO equipment is much heavier, so it needs a lot more manpower, which increases the cost significantly. When we look at OPEX, site rental is one of the biggest expenses. The site rental costs include the backhaul costs, but generally do not include the power costs. 
Again, as we noted earlier, the site rental is generally dependent on the numbers of kit, their weight and size. The equipment vendors nowadays look at how they can optimise this to reduce the costs. Local authorities and municipalities can offer cheaper alternatives that can help operators with densification while keeping the site rental costs under control. Operations is another big expense for RAN. There are many different tasks here, including testing everything in the lab to make sure everything is working smoothly, including different versions of software from different vendors. Many of these repetitive manual tasks can now be automated thanks to artificial intelligence and machine learning. In addition, the vendors are providing tools that can help with the automation. Virtualization and softwareization is another area that has helped reduce the hardware and convert many of the network functions into software. It is now easier to deploy binaries to test them out. Continuous integration and continuous development is also helping testing by doing it on a continuous basis rather than once every quarter. In addition to these, a lot of effort is spent in troubleshooting of faults and optimization of site, especially due to multiple generations and multiple frequencies. Manpower is needed for everything that cannot be automated. There is a lot of it required for field testing, drive testing, etc. Self-organizing networks and artificial intelligence can help reduce the amount of manpower required. In addition, there are many different softwares nowadays that continuously optimize the network. The final thing we want to discuss is power consumption. It is a big chunk of OPEX. 5G has significantly increased the power consumption with Massive MIMO the biggest culprit. Some operators have resorted to switching off certain equipment in the off-peak hours to save on the power consumption. New innovations are urgently needed here to help networks. Here are some references to continue learning more about the network TCO. So we hope you liked our approach and explanation of TCO calculation and how different networks are approaching them and reducing them to suit their needs. Again, there is no right or wrong approach. It's just a matter of preference and business case. As always, feel free to leave your thoughts, comments and suggestions in the comment section below. Thank you and see you again soon. Goodbye.